Hello! Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to make a histogram uh, and a stem and leaf plot in Microsoft Excel. Uh, there have been some recent changes to Microsoft Excel that make these a lot easier than they used to be. Uh, so let me go through them real quick. Uh, the data I have here is uh, some information I found online about uh, police misconduct settlements in the city of Los Angeles. Uh, and so it's the dollar amounts the, of those settlements based on um, uh, some sort of ruling or, or hearing or something along those lines. So look, looking through these, that uh, some of them are uh, traffic accidents that if a, the officer was determined to have caused the accident, there's some sort of settlement amount, uh, you know, for property damage or something most likely there. Uh, and then there's a few more serious ones, some false arrest, detention, imprisonment, uh, where you get a much larger um, settlement amount as well. So uh, we've got a few of these here, and I want to make a histogram of them. And just to kind of make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to copy, copy that column, and I'm going to move it into another sheet, just so that I don't um, accidentally mess up uh, the stuff in the original worksheet, um, original data, just, just to keep it what it is. So let's paste. Um, and then let me make that font a little bit larger so that you can see it here. Uh, let's go to like 24 or something like that. Okay. That's way larger than it needs to be, but that's okay. Uh, it is what it is. All right. Um, I'm going to show you the old school way to do it just because, just in case you don't have the newest version of Excel. Um, and then I'll show you the, the new way as well. Uh, but under the old version, you had to use some data analysis package, and the data analysis package wasn't automatically loaded into um, Excel. So to do that, you have to first load in the, the data analysis package. Um, you want to go to the File menu over here on the left-hand side. Come all the way down here to Options at the very bottom. Uh, you know, if you need to pause as I'm doing things and do it on your computer, uh, that's a, just fine. Just go ahead and hit that pause button. Uh, and then under the options, I want to choose add-ins. And then I want to manage my add-ins, Excel add-ins. I'm going to manage it down here at the bottom. And I want to turn on these two analysis tool packs. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the difference between those two are. I think the VBA stands for Virtual Basic Assistance, so you can do some programmable kind of things. But I turn them on and everything I want is there. Uh, I've also only turned on one and everything I needed was there as well, but I turn them both on just because. All right, say OK. And your Excel might hum and haw for a little bit. Uh, but what will happen is then under the Data option, this Data Analysis tools show up over here on the right hand side. Uh, if you don't turn those add-ins on, that won't be there. Uh, and the very first time when I started using Excel, it took me a good half hour, 45 minutes to try to figure out how to, how to, you know, said make a histogram, choose the option off the data analysis menu. But there was no data analysis menu. So it was, it took me a while to kind of figure out how to get all that stuff in there. Uh, but again, nowadays um, they made it a lot easier. You do need to set up some bins to start off with. Um, so bins are sort of your ranges of numbers you're going to look at. Uh, and I'm just looking at the numbers here. Um, I see a 50,000, a 20,000. Uh, so I'm going to count by 10,000s to start off with. Uh, and you do a few of them, you get a pattern in, uh, and then you can start to catch that and sort of drag down a little. And if you watch in the lower corner, it will auto fill in those numbers as you go along. And let's go down. Oh, there's a 5 million. And I got to go down here a ways. Uh, let's go to. Uh, oh, there's some big settlements in there. Um, well, there's a million. We'll count values between zero and a million. Uh, it will give you a, a, a more sort of thing and other things that don't fit beyond those bins, um, it'll give you a count of those as well. Uh, we can maybe play around with the bins and try to get one that shows all the data, 
but let's start with that. But you have to generate these bins first. Um, and then from the data analysis tool, I'm going to choose histogram from the list of things there. There should be a histogram option and say, okay, it'll bring up this little dialog box. Uh, in the dialog box, it asks for your input range. Uh, so select your input range. Um, you can select the, the word amount if you want. Uh, but if you do select amount, you have to turn on, click the label thing there, and that will let you know that you've sort of selected the label along with your data. Uh, I'm going to leave it off just because, uh, and then I'm going to drag down and select the input range. Input range is your data. And eventually down here, I get to the bottom of this list. I think we have quite a lot of data here. There's like three, 3,000 different results here. Um, this is like a 10 or 12 year period of um, settlements data. So eventually, wow, this is this is a lot longer than I thought it was. Scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Highlight, highlight, highlight. Don't let off that finger or you'll stop selecting data. Yeah, somewhere along this line. There is an end to this. I know there is. I might pause at the very end of it for just a second. I hope. So we don't go too far down and end off selecting a bunch of blank spots. You don't want any blank spots in your in your selection if you can avoid it. Because um, those will get counted as, uh, sometimes get counted. Oh, there it was. 3,571. That's where we want to go. All right. And then we need to select our bin range. So let me select my bin range here. And that was kind of long too, isn't it? There it is. Uh, again, I don't want the label box marked um, because I didn't select the label, but you can do that if you, uh, you want there. And let's get a chart output and um, say OK. And it will generate our histogram. Oh, it did it in a new sheet. Uh, but it's gone through and it's counted uh, that between zero and uh, 10,000, uh, there were 28 cases, 28 values, 28 settlements that were between zero and $10,000. There were 2,605 settlements that were between 10,000 and 20,000, 232 settlements between 20,000 and $30,000, and so on down the list. And we've got our histogram here. Let's make it bigger so we can see it. We'll grab this corner, click and drag. Uh, and there we can see our histogram showing up. Uh, so there are a few values in the more. I got 82 values that were over a million dollars. 82 settlements that were over a million dollars. Okay, but there's a whole lot more over here that were less than a million dollars that were in that small range. Um, one of the things that you should do um, is click to select all your data. Uh, and then you want to format your data series. Uh, this data really shouldn't have any gap between the values, so I'm going to reduce that down to zero to get rid of that gap. And so you want to shrink that gap down to zero uh, so that uh, so that there's no gap between the bars because there's there we're we're going from all the way. It's a nice continuous sort of spread between zero and ten thousand. There's not a real gap in there. All right, so there is our histogram. Um, you can go in here and you can play with it. You can, you know, put the title at the top if you want to. Um, LAPD uh, settlement amounts. Uh, and, you know, label the bin if you want. Um, US dollars. Whoops, I deleted it. Oh, well. Uh, you can play around with the chart options of getting things back, you know, messing around with the size, the proportions you want. Um, 
you can give it oh shadow glow you can make it glow isn't that exciting uh you can adjust the borders the paint fill it in play around with colors do what you like make it pretty uh in there as well um here now i've got just the data settled so i can change that color i don't know if you like orange or just solid black or whatever oh, navy blue or maybe a little bit lighter than navy blue there uh, whatever color uh, that you want there the boys in blue so we'll write that's the slang for the police officers sometimes we'll make it a blue graph for that uh, and so you generate your graph that way play around with it change the styles uh, this one's got style options you can play around with styles and colors two different themes that you want in there uh, in there select a different theme change the color it gives you kind of a preview as you mouse over it what the various colors are all right kind of cool um, that's again that's kind of the hard way to do a histogram um, is to do it along those lines uh, it works but it's a little bit different uh, let me go back to my sheet that I had over here with the original data um, there is the option uh, like any other graph they've now added under insert um, you can do some chart options uh, let me highlight that column and is that a histogram statistics chart okay yeah oh there they are so there you can do a histogram and oh that generates a histogram going all the way that's kind of a weird grouping of numbers there it goes from it looks like minus two and a half million all the way out to 16 million um so it's kind of odd to have a negative i guess if the settlement was in favor of the police and the the person had to pay the police officer uh or the police department we'd get a negative number in there uh in there but uh, so you've got this thing and i think you can you can edit that you can change the settings down here that you won't can mess around with um adjusting that bottom bottom line Hmm. Bottom line, bottom value in there, soft edges, size, properties. I think if you select that bottom amount row, maybe you can do some format data series. You can you can adjust that in there. So if you do it the, the old-fashioned way, you got a lot of control over that from the get-go, but I think you can do those, those same changes um, in here with uh, your histograms. All right. Um, how about uh, another type of chart? You can also, in the stats one, which is stats charts here, you also have a box and whisker plot option. And... Uh, that because this data is so spread out, uh, this doesn't really look too much like a box and whisker plot uh, in there. Let me do just a smaller, let's maybe ignore some of these outliers and uh, let me highlight a different chunk of this data here. Let me do kind of a smaller, smaller piece of it um, and see if we get something that looks a little bit more box and whisker each. Still, still not much box and whisker issue. We got that $16 million or a $14 million set of one in there that's showing up as a real outlier. <coughs> in there, so maybe that's not such a good uh, set of data to, to show this off with, um, but uh, uh, eventually we know where they are now, right? How about a smaller chunk? Let's just do, let's skip that. Uh, well, that one's still really big. Let's take those 20 observations and do a uh, box and whisker plot with it. So insert, stats, box and whisker. All right, there's our box and whisker plot. 
uh, that comes up in there. So we got a little bit of a box, a little bit of a whisker there, and several outliers uh, relative to those those values in there. Okay. Uh, so box and whisker plots and uh, histograms, they're um, uh, can be easy, but they also can be a little bit of a challenge to get it to show the way that you want to uh, show in there. So uh, using the data analysis option to do the histogram gives you control of setting the bins, but you do have to set the bins. Um, if you don't, uh, Excel will sort of automatically generate those for you. Okay. Um, all right. Thanks for watching.